right, Ben. Also, we have seen Baltimore, as we've talked about from New York, go right away, Chris. That's got to be a surprise. And, and Dr. Z said maybe someone pulled the plug too soon. It's very possible. I think what Howard said also, Bobby, that uh, there could be another trade. In other words, maybe that jacks up the price a little bit more. We already have Elway now. Now you better come up with even a better package. You know, there are worse things that San Diego could do than keep uh, three of the first 22 picks overall in the draft and perhaps re, uh, you know, come to terms with Dan Fouts. Remember, they were going to have to pay Elway about uh, what Fouts was demanding, and that's a situation that uh, they may have had a tough time uh, getting to their fans on if they didn't get to the Super Bowl. Okay, so if you've just joined us, Baltimore has selected John Elway. They waited nearly 35, 45 seconds to make that selection. The clock is ticking on the Rams who are picking second. Seattle is next up. We continue with our coverage of the 1983 National Football League Collegiate Draft right after this word. <laughs> To the LA Rams, the first round, the second pick actually of the overall draft, and you see just a shade over nine minutes during the first two rounds of the draft. Each uh, team will have 15 minutes per selection, and then through the balance of the draft, the last 10 rounds, it'll be five minutes per selection. The Rams picking second because they, Chris, decided to trade up and work the deal a couple of days ago with Seattle. Obviously, at least as obvious as you can be before the draft, it looked like they're going to make their move for Eric Dickerson by trading up to the number two position because the Oilers had wanted to do so much. And uh, Dickerson seems to be the man they want. Especially since uh, the Rams traded Wendell Tyler. It would seem that Dickerson is the guy they want. Dickerson said he wants to go to L.A. or San Diego. It is Los Angeles' pick. Uh, maybe they just like to burn off a little time on that clock. They like to see it tick down, think it's uh, add a little excitement here. Let's get back to New York. The Rams were 2-7 and seven last year, and here is their selection. Thanks, Bob. The commissioner now has the Rams pick as he approaches the podium. The Los Angeles Rams. The Colts did it in 30 seconds, and the Rams took their time to do what everybody thought was going to come. Told her to, told her to make him dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the explanation is. Who, who, Maybe some team was talking to them about a trade, and they were thinking about it a little longer. You just never know, but it was certainly was a surprise. They took almost seven minutes to make that selection. Well, I, wish, I wish we were in the war room with some of these teams to see <laughs> who's given up on the Elway sweepstakes and who's intensified their efforts. And, and, uh, I think maybe if you see somebody taking a lot of time where, when they shouldn't, somebody is uh, bugging them for their pick. And we should point out, too, the situation surrounding the Rams, in case you missed it late yesterday, the Rams did send Wendell Tyler to San Francisco along with Cody Jones, so that made it very clear that they would go for a running back. Seattle up next, and it's very clear from all the discussions all of us have had with Seattle folks that Kurt Warner seems to be the man that at this point in time, we don't know who they're going to pick, seems to be the man they were looking for. Well, you know, the, the Seattle organization has said all along that they wanted Warner ahead of Dickerson. And if John Robinson would have believed them, he could have kept that three spot, didn't have to move up, and could have gotten Dickerson anyway. Of course, maybe he doesn't believe them. Of course, Warner, uh, so much like Joe Cribbs, uh, the running back that Knox had in Buffalo. So you got to feel that's what they're going to do. Maybe they'll take all their 15 minutes now and then pick Kurt Warner, who we all expected anyway. <laughs> okay, we're waiting on Seattle. Already gone. John Elway has been picked by the Baltimore Colts as the top draft. Dickerson has just been selected from SMU by the Los Angeles Rams. We're waiting on Seattle. But how about Dickerson? Let's go back to our studio and get an update on a very fine running back. Bob? Indeed, a very fine running back. We talked about him during our draft preview program. Which there's maybe only one great fullback, James Jones, out of Florida in this draft, but a whole slew of good people with outside speed. And Dickerson certainly has that outside speed. It, an average of seven yards a carry out of SMU. And you're talking about a guy, maybe the question is, can he run from a split backfield instead of out of the eye? But, of course, uh, his coach with the Rams will be John Robinson. Well, John has been a follower of the tradition of uh, Southern California where our tailback's going to get the ball a great deal of the time. He's going to make our football team. You go back to O.J. Simpson, to Davis, to Bell, to all of the great tailbacks. And that's the philosophy that John Robinson has. And pro football is not that much different. Now, Chris, he has not caught Eric Dickerson a great deal of passes. SMU did not necessarily throw their backs a lot. Maybe that's not a major question for the Rams. But we'll grade him out in just a second. Here's a guy who's averaged nearly 150 yards a game. Yeah, and the pros these days, as you know, Bobby, a lot of teams are going to go with the one setback. Maybe he has that in mind for perhaps Robinson with Eric Dickerson. Uh, the fact that he doesn't fumble many pitch outs, maybe they think he has the good hands. They say that when he, that ball was thrown to him, Bob, that he looked good with it. So it's just not fair to 
fault him because he didn't play in an offense that had, uh, you know, a pro style. As a running back, we'll grade him on inside speed, outside speed, his ability to block for fellow running backs and catching. And again, on that five-point system, we get him a best grade ever for outside speed at 5.0 and an 18.8 .8 out of a possible 20 again. Remember, these are compendium of different NFL scouting reports. We are waiting now on the Seattle selection. Let's send it back to the Sheridan and George Grant. Thank you, Bob. We're waiting on the Seattle Seahawks. Their selection will be coming up next. Uh, the Seattle contingent of Bob Anderson and Gary Sussick now waiting on the word. There is the card handed to Don Weiss, and it goes to the commissioner for the third pick of this 1983 National Football League draft. Already selected, Baltimore picks Elway. Dickerson selected by the Rams. Here's the commissioner. The Seattle Seahawks, with a choice of change from the Los Angeles Rams through the Houston Oilers, select on the first round, running back Kurt Warner, Penn State. Next up, Denver Broncos. Well, there we have three down so far. Elway to Baltimore, Dickerson to Los Angeles, and Warner to Seattle. As we wait, the fourth pick. Will it be 100 to Denver, or will there be a trade? ESPN's live and continuous coverage of the 1983 National Football League Collegiate Draft will continue after these messages. Sheridan Hotel. We are waiting on the clock for the Denver Broncos with their first round selection. 12 minutes and change remaining. Again, each team is allowed 15 minutes in their first and second round selections. After that, for the remainder of the draft, it will be a total of five minutes per round, and it'll all be done in one day. Let's check in with Leandra Riley, who's standing by in New Jersey. Lord Jim's in Hawthorne, New Jersey, and I'm sitting next to Tommy Vigorito, running back for the New Orleans. I'm sorry for the Miami Dolphins. We've had two running backs already drafted since you've had to make the adjustment from the college ranks to the professional ranks. Your advice to Kurt Warner and Eric Dickerson? Well, I think uh, one of the biggest things to a running back going from college to pros is uh, not to expect to set the world on fire right away. Uh, it's a lot of adjustment emotionally and uh, physically. And you don't, you're not really expected to go in and start and uh, gain 2,000 yards your first year. One of the biggest things that they really should start working on now is not only the physical, but the mental aspect of uh, learning your plays. Uh, that, that it sounds simple, but it's it's so hard when you get into the pros with the audibles and all. But it means so much to coaches that you can be able to pick up your plays your first couple of days of practice and all. So if they get their hands on a playbook and start studying, that'd be the best thing for them. All right, I would like your reaction to the drafting by Baltimore of, uh, of John Elway. A lot of people were surprised. They thought they'd trade that selection away. Well, uh, I was surprised, too, but I'm happy with San Diego because I think uh, we can beat Baltimore with Elway, but I don't know about it if we could beat San Diego with them if they got rid of foul, So. <laughs> okay, John Elway, the gauntlet has been tossed by the Miami Dolphins. Let's go back to New York. Thank you very much, Leander. We'll be checking in with Leander periodically during the course of this day to keep up to date with some of the agents and some of the key players of this 1983 National Football League draft who are there. Don't forget, we'll be checking in with the West Coast. Greg Wyatt will be there. We'll check in with him shortly to update you on what's happening with some of those West Coast teams. And also, as we wait for the Denver Broncos decision, let's check in at our ESPN studios with Bob Lee and company. Robert. Thank you, George. Not too much of a surprise that Kurt Warner went to Seattle, Chris, when you consider uh, some of the economic connections. Well, people are saying it's a question of to agents, do we shy away from players? My understanding is that Marvin Demoff and not only Kurt Warner, the running back from Penn State, but also Chuck Knox, the new uh, Seattle Seahawks coach. So chances are they ought to be able to get together on some terms. Well, so far we have seen John Elway go to Baltimore. No trade yet. The Rams taking Eric Dickerson second and Kurt Warner selected by Seattle. Speaking of the number two selection in this draft is Eric Dickerson of SNU has gone to the Rams. Greg White standing by live at Rams draft headquarters in Los Angeles to talk with head coach John Robinson. Well, it was a foregone conclusion, really, that you would pick Eric Dick Dickerson. Of course, uh, Wendell Tyler went to San Francisco yesterday. Well, we feel in, in Eric Dickerson, we have a man who has the potential of being one of the really great backs. He's got every physical uh, attribute that you would want in a back. 
I've been very impressed also things besides size and speed. Uh, I've been impressed with his ability to run tough inside and his uh, elusiveness. Uh, you know, you, you think of a speed guy being an escapist and just going. Well, I think he can make you miss in, in tight. I think he's got some of the attributes that I think have made Marcus Allen such a good back. So I, I see some parallels between them, but I also see some great speed. When you look at a guy like Dickerson, anybody who can uh, beat Earl Campbell's record in the Southwest Conference has just got to be incredible. And he's done some phenomenal. He, he breaks long runs at a, at a, at a phenomenal rate. It seems like about every uh, four or five minutes when you watch film, he runs 70 yards for a touchdown. That's not bad. And uh, uh, we're just we're really very excited about him. This is going to be very interesting in Los Angeles with Marcus Allen of the Raiders and now Eric Dickerson of the Rams. Back to you. Thank you very much, Greg. And Denver, the time ticking down with eight minutes and change on the Denver Broncos, the fourth selection overall in the first round of the draft. And Denver, that is a picture of uh, exactly what's happening in New York, and it's Denver's own selection. What is the shopping list for Denver? A lot of stories they might have been dealing number one of next year for Elway. That is yet to occur, of course. Dan Reeves, the head coach of Denver, has a rather long shopping list, as you might expect after last season. We'd like a wide receiver, a tight end as far as our offense is concerned and wouldn't mind getting an offensive lineman. Uh, on defense, I feel like the, we have to improve our pass rush. We're looking for a defensive lineman. I'd like to find a cornerback. So there's five or six positions that we'd like to help ourselves with. And we got the fourth pick of the draft this year. And, you know, I really haven't uh, sat down and started writing them. But if we could get one of those positions in the first round, I feel like it'd help our football team. So the coach mentioning a number of different positions. Let's backtrack just for a second and look at the selection that Seattle has made. Agents aside of Kurt Warner, who, but statistically, is the top man ever at Penn State, has been called better than Lydell Mitchell, better than Franco Harris. And, of course, with 4-5 speed, a 5-point average, a lot of pass catching his senior year. Well, I think uh, it's a tribute also to uh, Kurt Warner's general attitude about football and it being a team game. Uh, going into the season, uh, he probably would have been... Uh, Close to Herschel Walker, the other great running backs for yardage gain, had Joe Paterno not changed the philosophy of offense. Joe felt in today's football, you must throw the football more. And they changed their basic attack. Instead of trying to wear people down in the fourth quarter, they put the ball up in the air. Uh, Warner adapted to it, uh, gave to his teammates, was a great pass receiver, and everybody knew he could run the football already. And he is, of course, on our scouting report again. Our five-point system, Chris, maybe his blocking is the low mark, but his outside speed certainly one of the reasons that Seattle took him third in this draft. Yeah, as Bud said, uh, Bob, that he did not sulk very long for not carrying the football, and it made him a more polished uh, uh, professional, or about to be professional, and Chuck Knox, as uh, Dr. Z has referred to all along, had said that he thought that in Warner versus Dickerson that the Seahawks would be getting a more polished player, inside, outside, blocking, and also catching, and maybe he Maybe he's right. All right. Denver is the team next up, though. The clock continues to march down on the Denver Broncos. There's been talk of them trying to work a trade for a tight end with Dallas. Yet to be seen, though. Let's see what's happening right now in New York City. Thanks, Bob. We're still awaiting five minutes, 40 seconds plus on the Denver Broncos and their selection. And, gentlemen, when you talk about Seattle, uh, the last five first-round picks they've had have been on defense. But it was really known that they were going to go for some punch for something in the offense because they've had so many injuries in that backfield and the offense whereas it's getting older is a good offense with a little bit of help here or there you talk about you talk about seattle's picks being defense but they weren't chuck knox's picks. Yeah. right i think the other key also though is seattle could use some upgrading on their offensive line with this trade now where they gave the second and third round pick to Houston to move up. They don't have a fourth round pick. That went to St. Louis in a trade for Theotis Brown a couple of years ago. So Seattle no, now takes a lot of time off. They don't pick again until the fifth round. So they've still got, it's, it was an interesting deal from that standpoint that they traded up six spots and gave up their second and third picks and won't pick now for a while. So uh, I mean, they, they, they gave up some players that they might have been able to add and help the team too. Theotis Brown is a perfect example too. He looked so good right after that trade in the late season and then just did not look good at all last year. Maybe Chuck will bring Conrad Dober out of retirement. <laughs> the other, one other interesting thing, the Rams. Rollins tonight. <laughs> Paul was talking earlier about the Rams could have probably stayed three and gotten Dickerson anyway. But I guess their thinking was, well, we only had to trade a fourth to move up to one spot. So perhaps, for, and they're thinking it wasn't that high a price just to make sure that they got Dickerson well, to move up to one spot. Well, 
last year and a fourth this year. I mean, all these <coughs> all these extra drafts that, that uh, Don Klosterman had built up, now they're losing him, and, and uh, I wonder how he feels sitting watching this thing. Denver. All the speculation has been pointed towards Tony Hunter, the great tight end from the University of Notre Dame, is 